Exploded views. Why are they important for industrial designers, manufacturing, and product development? How are they done? What are they used for? I'm going to show you how I created the sketch of this exploded view. Today's video is sponsored by PCB Way. Right now, they have a one-time limited promotion of $30 for SMT surface mount boards for 1 to 20 pieces. See the link below in the description. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. One of my clients asked me to help them redesign an existing scented oil warmer. And this is a very classic industrial design project in the sense that we need to use some existing components. In this case, the plug that you see here and then the resistor that I'm trying to remove. One of the great things too about being an industrial designer is that you get to take things apart and it really helps you learn how things are put together actually and how things are manufactured. Uh, because if you can take it apart, uh, because ultimately it has to be put together, this will help you to become a better designer to uh, understand how things actually go together. So existing componentry here, plug on the right, uh, resistor on the left, and that resistor gets warm when you plug it in and it heats up the oil in the wick from the refill unit and uh, atomizes it and uh, puts it into the air. And we're gonna make a little base for this. So to make this exploded view, I'm gonna build a mock-up uh, so that it will help me easier. It'll be easier for me to make a sketch of this exploded view to have all the components. I can stack them up in 3D, sketch on top of that photograph, and then create the sketch with all the information changes and details that are needed so that the team can take a look at that and see if that, that's how they want to manufacture the product. So the client wants their product to look a little bit more like the Airwick unit. Uh, and so we are going to take apart an existing Airwick unit. You can see the uh, construction of this is almost identical to the other one, simple plug and then a resistor that heats up. Uh, but we want to have ours be styled a little bit more like the existing uh, Airwick unit to compete against that. So I'm taking one of those apart and we're gonna kind of cannibalize that and that's how to help us work around uh, the patents or any legal issues that we may have. So we don't make it exactly the same, but we use that as a guide to help us with that product and i'm just making a little base here this is uh, purely out of foam core half inch here and you can watch some of my other videos about building foam core uh, models i'll link to that up here on the right all right i need to build some sort of a structure to hang all of these uh, actual parts on so that uh, i can create the exploded view uh, that you saw in the beginning and make it look the way I want. I'm gonna just start with some simple materials here, which is a simple dowel. I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of this dowel and that'll become obvious why I'm doing that uh, here in just a second. You all know that I hate hot glue. In this case, we're building a very quick mock-up, so hot glue is the right material to use as it's very quick and fast and allows me to quickly heat this up to build the mock-up because ultimately I need to do a sketch of this. We're gonna drop in a couple of brass rods here and the wood holds up the base. The brass rods will hold up the top piece. The hot glue is easy and quick and allows me to hold and adjust the pieces in the right place the way I want quickly and easily. So here's the top view of the piece. It also lets me line it up. I happen to be using the um, the bosses that the uh, actual part is put together with, all the through holes and stuff like that. And that works perfect here for my structure to hold all the parts in 3D space uh, to make this. So now we want to use the existing parts that we have and we're using the existing plug here. I'm gonna attach a plastic straw uh, as a standoff, hold that in place. 
All right, I've cut the straw down to the length that I want, and we're gonna hot glue that to the back of the part where it will go when it gets assembled. So we'll just glue that in, pop in the little heating element that'll get attached in the right place. So the really nice thing too about making a 3D mock-up like this first is that I get to have the wires, they're gonna have a little bit of life and a little bit of realism to them when we go to the mock-up. So here I've set this up in my photo booth. It is top lit with one major light and then some light from my left. And I put up my grid, uh, my cutting board, my cutting mat on the right, and this gives me my perspective grid. I like doing my exploded views uh, with a little bit of flare, so it's shot from down low. It's a little bit more dramatic, kind of hero-like. And I put in my grid, and I use the uh, mat, the cutting mat, to help me put in my grid, and I'm just erasing out the background that I do not need anymore so that I can go in and have a nice clean sketch and sketch on top of that. This was done about a year ago, and uh, I was still using Photoshop at that point. This bottle is a bottle that I designed. Uh, you can buy these scented oil warmers uh, at CVS under the Total Healthcare brand. Uh, the bottle in this picture is a glass one. They did not go into production as glass. They went into production as plastic. I tried, always trying to save the planet. So now we're just sketching over the existing image to get the important pieces that we want. Uh, we'll change some of the construction details here and there and the exterior as well. I, you can see I changed the way this thing goes together and kind of simplify it. And here we're even doing uh, dotted lines to indicate that airs, uh, you can see through the part to see the part behind it. So all I'm trying to do here is create the line drawing uh, based on the mock-up that I've built. And I don't really want all the shading or anything like that. I just want a line drawing to indicate what the part will look like. And that underlay or the photograph is my underlay for the object. I'm just coming back, kind of cleaning up some of the lines, adding the a little adjuster cone at the top adding in the thickness, uh, the snaps, to show how it would all be put together to make things as realistic. This way the molder can take a look at this before we go ahead and create the data to see if it's something that they can make. Uh, and then if they buy off on that and management buys off on that, then I know that that's what it is that I'm gonna be modeling in the computer and shooting for, uh, for production. All right, we've got the line drawing put together, and now we're gonna add some value to these objects to make them a little bit more 3D so that it can be easily read and understood. Uh, I add the simple shading or drop shadow on the bottle first at the bottom, and then on separate layers, we just go through and start adding value to all the surfaces. Again, I know that my major light source is from the top and from the left. So I basically go through and add value to all the darker surfaces that are in shadow from that light source. And this starts to make this object come alive and have a little bit of depth. So all the surfaces that are facing away from the light source, those are the darkest. This happens to be one of them here. And then as the uh, surfaces change in form, the value changes as well. So remember, form change equals value change, and we want to reflect that in our sketch. We can also use a little bit of trickery to add a little bit of value to add depth. So things that are in the background, like the backsides of these cones and the insides of objects, they may get a little bit of darkness or a little bit darker. You'll see me add that in right here just to show that they're the on the inside and give some depth to the whole sketch. Lastly, no good industrial design sketch is complete until you add notes. And these notes are super, super important so that people involved can understand uh, the components, possibly what they're made out of 
how they'll be fabricated, uh, materials, colors, finishes, that sort of thing. And that's the final sketch. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down twice. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.